Hello everyone, today we are going to study the introduction to sets. It is a lesson following the MELCs or the most essential learning competencies mandated by the Department of Education for Grade 7 Mathematics. So let us start our lesson now. First, let us define what is a set. A set is a well-defined collection of distinct objects, okay? And when we say well-defined, it refers to a specific property which makes it easy to identify whether the given object belongs to the set or not. It means uh, those objects have something in common. And the word distinct means that the objects of a set must be all different. And these objects are called the elements or members of the set. Okay, a set has members or elements. And a set may be anything. It could be numbers, people, places, letters, etc. And there, these are examples of sets. Set of real numbers, set of balls, set of math problems, set of countries, set of colors, and more. Now, how do we denote a set? A set is usually denoted by capital letters, okay? And the, the elements or members of a set are denoted by small letters. That is, small letter A, small letter B, and small letter C, and so on. And this is the symbol for a set. These curly brackets symbolize a set. If capital letter A is any set and small letter A is a member of set A, then we write it as like this. A is an element of A. So this symbol in the middle is not letter E, but it symbolizes an element of. So A is an element of capital letter A. And we can also read it as A belongs to A. It means you can find small letter A inside the set capital letter A. And then if A is not a member of set capital letter A, then we write A is not an element of A. So this is the symbol for not an element of. It's just like the first element with um, a line in the middle. So A is not an element of capital letter A. And we can also read it as A does not belong to A. Now we will study the basic types of sets. There are many types of sets. We will only uh, go over the basic ones. The first type is an empty set. An empty set is a set with no element or nothing inside. That's why it's called empty. It is also called as null set. So null set means empty set. And we also have singleton set. It is a set with only one element or only one member. And we also have finite set. It is a set with a countable number of elements. Okay? And we also have infinite set. It is a set with, in which the number of elements cannot be counted or has no limit. So finite set has finite number of elements, so we can count them. Infinite set is a set with uh, elements that have no limit or we cannot count all the elements. And we also have subset. It is a set with element or elements which is or which are part of another set. It means it is a set where its elements can be found in another set, which is the mother set. And we also have what we call the universal set. This is the set in which is the base for every other set formed. Usually this is this set uh, represents the whole. Okay, now how do we represent sets? Okay. 
But before that, I think I need to give you examples of the basic types of sets. So let's have examples of an empty set, singleton set, finite set, infinite set, a subset, or a universal set. So I will be writing here an example for an empty set. So first, an empty set. So an empty set can be set of um, people with five eyes. Okay, can you find people with five eyes? No, okay. So if we call that one, let's say set A, okay, set A is set of people with five eyes, then we will write set A as like this only symbol of set and nothing inside or there are no members or elements inside because there are no people with five eyes and we can also symbolize um, an empty set as this symbol so that is the symbol for null set so empty set or null set are the same thing so the second one is the specific uh, symbol for null set okay so, uh, what could be another example of an empty set uh, it could be um, the set of okay let's have another example maybe we will call it set B set of um, natural numbers less than one okay set of natural numbers less than one first do you remember what are natural numbers natural numbers are the counting numbers and how do you count one two three four five six and so on so is there a natural number less than one no so our set b is an empty set okay or a null set okay there are no numbers, I mean natural numbers, that are less than 1. So that is a null set or an empty set. Now let's go to let number 2. Singleton set. So let's have an example of a singleton set. A singleton set is simply a set with only one element. Okay? So let's say um, letter C. Set of the current president of the Philippines. So, who is the current president of the Philippines? It is Rodrigo, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, or in short, Duterte. So, there is only one president of the Philippines right now. So this set has only one element or only one member, which is Duterte. So this is a singleton set. And we can also have other examples like set with only one number, let's say number 10, or set with only one letter, let's say um, letter Q. Okay, so these are also examples of singleton sets, okay? Now, let's have examples of finite set, infinite set, subset, and universal set. Okay, so let me erase these examples first. So a finite set is a set with finite number of elements. It means we can uh, count the number of elements. So 
what could be an example of that okay an example of that could be this one so number three example could be uh, let's call it set d set of uh, integers between 0 and 10 okay so what are those integers integers are whole numbers and it could also be 0 or negative of the whole numbers so what are the integers between 0 and 10 so those are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 we don't include 0 and 10 uh, because it says between them only, between 0 and 10. So this is a finite set, set because we can count the exact number of elements. And how many elements are there in the set? 9. So we, this is an example of a finite set. How about an example of an infinite set? Okay, an infinite set example could be set of integers okay set of integers set of numbers which are called integers and what are those numbers okay what are the elements of this set it has the number zero and to the right are numbers one two three four and so on or to the left of zero could be negative one negative two and so on and we cannot uh, write all the elements of this set because there are infinitely many elements or members of this set so this is an example of an infinite set we cannot count the exact number of the members or elements because there is no limit for the elements or number or members of that set okay so these are examples of an, a finite set and an infinite set. Now let's go to the, the examples of number 5 and number 6. To have examples of 5 and 6, I will start with number 6, a universal set. Okay, so usually a universal set is the mother set. So let's say our universal set is usually universal set is denoted by capital letter U so usually it could be set of real numbers so set of real numbers is a universal set okay, it covers all the real numbers positive real numbers negative real numbers rational numbers irrational numbers and zero and uh, it can also be a smaller set it could be maybe set of natural numbers only okay it can also be a set of natural numbers what about subset okay what about subset number five okay, a subset is a set that is part of the mother set or part of another set let's say uh, we will call the first example in number six as u1 universal set one and the second one is u2 for universal set two um, okay u1 and u2 so okay, well, what could be an Example of a subset for U1 or the universal set 1. It could be Okay, we can call it any set like set P. It could be or let's have a specific example set um, Z, okay in mathematics Z stands for the set of Integers so set of integers so the set of integers is part of the set of real numbers 
And this is how we write this in symbol form. Z is subset of R. So that is the symbol for subset. It's like a horseshoe facing to the right. So Z or set of integers is a subset or part of the set of real numbers. It means all integers are real numbers. How about for our universal set 2 or U2? What could be an example of a subset of that set? Okay, we can have, maybe we will call it set P. We can have natural numbers uh, from 10 to 15. Okay, that could be a subset of U2. So our set P is a subset of set U2 or universal set 2. Why is that so? Because um, this set P equals the, number, uh, the set with numbers 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So that is our set P. Num our natural numbers from 10 to 15. So it, it includes 10 and it includes 15. And if you look at those numbers, those numbers can also be found in U2 or universal set 2, right? Those are also natural numbers that can be found in the whole set of U natural numbers or U2. So we say that P is, subs is a subset of U2. Okay, so these are some examples of the basic types of sets. Now let's go back to our slides. Um, how do we represent sets? Okay, there are three ways to represent a set. Okay, three ways. The first way is using the, roast, the roster or the tabular form. This is listing all the elements of a set separated by commas and enclosed within the set symbol or the curly brackets. Okay, so we list all the elements of a set separated by commas. So that is how we write a set in roster or tabular form. Example, set A with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, that is set in roster form or tabular form. Another example, set B with elements 2, 4, 6 up to 50. So it means uh, num even numbers from 2 to 50. Or we can also have this set. Okay, this is an infinite set of positive odd numbers. It could be also this set. Okay, this set, this set is also written in roster or tabular form. As long as you put uh, the numbers or the elements inside the curly brackets and you separate them by commas, that is uh, a set in roster or tabular form. Okay, and this is the usual way of writing sets or representing sets. So these first two examples are finite sets, right? Because we can count the number of elements. The first set or the set A has five elements. Set B has uh, 25 elements. But the last two examples are infinite sets. We cannot count the exact number of elements or members. The second way of writing or representing sets is the descriptive form. In this set form, we state the set in words. I mean, we state in words the elements of the set. Example of uh, writing the set in descriptive form is set A equals set of first five natural numbers. So this area here where you write 
or where you describe the set using words is the descriptive form of the set. Or we can also have a set B which is the set of positive even integers less than or equal to 1. Or we can also have set of positive odd integers. So the easiest way to remember descriptive form is if the set is written in words or described in words, then that set is written in descriptive form. Um, tabular or roster is the set is written inside the brackets and then separated by commas. And the third form of representing sets is the set builder form. Here, uh, we write the set in symbolic form and uh, writing in symbolic form the common characteristics shared by all the elements of the set. So we write in symbolic forms, in symbolic form the common characteristics shared by all the elements of the set. Example, set D, which is the set of all X such that X is a real number. So this is how you read this set builder form. Our set D is the set of all X. So this is how you read it. The set of all X, this colon can be read as such that, okay? The set of all X such that X is a real number. What does it mean? It means a set with all real numbers, okay? A set of all number X such that that number is a real number. In short, this is a set of real numbers. Second example, our set P is the set of X such that X is an element of capital letter N. And what is that capital letter N? That is the set of natural numbers. So set P is the set of all X such that X is an element of N or the set of natural numbers. And we have uh, the next example, set S, which is the set of all Y such that Y is an element of capital letter E. What is capital letter E? Set of even numbers such that your Y is more than zero but less than or equal to negative 10. Okay, so I will I repeat. Y, uh, the set S is the set of all Y such that Y is an element of set of even numbers. And that Y must be more than zero and less than or equal to 10. So here we can use different letters for our set. We can use letter X or letter Y okay, or other letters, other small letters to represent any element or any member of the set. Now, if you uh, list all the numbers in this set, set S, what are those numbers? What are those numbers which are even numbers, which are more than zero, but less than or equal to 10? Okay? Those numbers are 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. It cannot be zero because the number Y should be more than zero. So what is the next number after zero, which is an even number? Two, then four, then six, then eight, and it can be equal to 10. So we include the 10. Okay, so those are the elements of this set. And this is how you write the set in set builder form. So it looks like the set builder form is the most complicated way of representing the set. So we can have also an example of the set of X, which is set of all P such that P is an element of the set of odd numbers because, because O means set of odd numbers. And that P must be more than 1. Again, our set X is the set of all P such that P is an element of capital letter O and that P must be more than 1. So what are the odd numbers more than 1 or greater than 1? Okay? 
those are 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. Okay, those are the elements or members of set X. Set of all P such that P is an odd number and more than 1. And there is another way to write sets in set builder form. Instead of using the colon, we can use the bar. Okay? So that means the same thing. So our P here can be written in this way. Set of all X such that X is an element of N. Okay? Also, the, Q, the S can be written in this way. We, repra we replace the colon with the bar symbol. And also, set X can be written in this way. Okay, so these are the two ways to write sets in set builder form. Okay, now let's have you practice about writing sets in roster or tabular form and set builder form. Okay, so first one is write the set of first seven natural numbers in roster or tabular form and set builder form and the second one is write the set of whole numbers less than five so let's do this so we have first the set of first seven natural numbers so our answer for i will be okay what are those first seven natural numbers okay the first seven natural numbers are okay we will start with the roster form or tabular form so we put the bracket open bracket and then what are the first seven natural numbers simply one two three four five six and seven those are the natural the first seven natural numbers okay so this is our roster form answer now let's have our answer in set builder form to write the answer in set builder form we can use a any variable to represent a single uh, member or element of that set let's say we will use x so it will be set of all x such that okay x is an element of set of natural numbers okay and that x is between and that x is more than or equal to 1 but less than or equal to 7. So this is how we write the set of first 7 natural numbers in set builder form. Uh, of course, we have to uh, define what is n. n is set of natural numbers. Okay. So don't worry if this one looks more uh, looks complicated you can uh, master this with a lot of practice so I, I think the first method tabular form is the easiest so we just write all the elements inside the bracket with commas the second one is a bit complicated you can use any variable you can always use x so a set of all x such that that x is an element of set of natural numbers you have to define what is that x that x is natural number next you need to define the value of that x okay you have to define that the value of that x should be only from 1 to 7 so that x can be equal to 1 or more than 1 or can be equal or less than 7 okay for double i Let's go to double I, answer. So double I, the set of whole numbers less than five. So 
for the rooster form or tabular form, what are the whole numbers less than 5? Those are 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. 0 is also a whole number. Okay? But negative 1, negative 2 are not whole numbers. But they are negative of the whole numbers. Okay? So those are the numbers, or I mean the whole numbers less than 5. Or we, you can write it also in ascending order. Start from 0 up to 4. So that is the roster form or tabular form. Now, how do we write our answer in set builder form? Okay, so we will write set of all x. This time, I will use colon for the symbol of such that. Okay, the set of all x such that x is an element of set of whole numbers. So, W. Okay, uh, by the way, the... Um, the formal way to write the set n or natural numbers must be like this. Okay. And then w could be like this. But anyway, simple letter w or simple letter n will be understood and it can be used. So the set of all x such that x is an element of w okay or set of whole numbers and you have to define that the value of that x is between 0 i mean from 0 to 4 okay and you need to write here w means set of whole numbers so that is the answer for the set of whole numbers less than 5 in set builder form. Again, set of all x such that x is an element of w because x, that x should be a whole number. And then you define the values of the, that x. That x can be more than or equal to 0 and can be less than or equal to 4. All right. Let's have uh, another two examples. So, next will be this one. The set of positive integers less than 20 and divisible by 3. Set of positive integers less than 20 and divisible by 3. So, how do you write that in tabular form or rooster form first okay so positive integers less than 20 and divisible by 3 again let's review what are integers integers are 1 2 3 4 5 and so on 0 negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 and so on those are integers but we are only using here positive integers so only 1 2 3 and so on and it says positive integers that are less than 20 and another condition divisible by 3. So what are the, in, the integers, I mean positive integers that are less than 20 and can be divided by 3? Okay, let's start with 3. Yes, 3 is a positive integer and it is less than 20, right? And you can divide it by 3. Next 6, next 9, next 12, 15, 18. And think, I think that is the last answer, right? So this is the answer in tabular form or rooster form. Tabular form or rooster form. So these are the positive integers, less than 20. All of them are less than 20. And all of them are positive. And all of them can be divided or divisible by 3. Okay, now how do we write them in set builder form? So we can use, uh, we can use um, x again to represent a single or one element. So this is the set of all x. That x is just one element that represents the other elements. So set of all x such that that x 
should be a positive integer. So, element of z plus. Uh, remember, z is the symbol for set of all integers. But when you say, so if, if, the, if the question is only integers, your symbol is z. But if the question is positive integers, you have to put a superscript of plus sign. Okay, a set of positive integers is z superscript plus sign. So your x or your number x should be positive, should be a positive integer. So x is an element of z plus or set of positive integers. And you have to define the values of that x. Okay. Um, that x can be more than or equal to 3. Le but less than or equal to oh it says less than 20 so we will use that uh, condition that x must be less than 20 and there is another condition so use another comma that x is divisible by 3 okay so how do you how do you write divisible by 3 in symbol form uh, actually, you can write that in words, divisible by 3. Or if you have studied already in advance, you can write it in this way. 3 divides x. Again, 3... Wait, wait a minute, what's wrong? Okay. So... Three divide, okay, our x is less than 20, and that three can divide x, okay? It, it is similar to the symbol for such that, okay? So, but in math, that also means division. So, it's not three over x, it, it means that three can divide x. Okay, that means 3 divides x, or 3 is divisible, uh, that x is divisible by 3, okay? It doesn't mean 3 over x, huh? it's different. It means 3 divides x, or that x is divisible by 3. And of course, uh, uh, you have to define z plus. So z plus equals set of positive integers okay set of positive integers now for the last example the set of integers greater than negative 2 and less than 13 okay so let's do it this last example greater than negative 2 less than 13 so integers greater than negative 2 are negative 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 because it says it should be less than 13 so up to 12 only greater than negative 2 less than 13 so this is the set in tabular form or roster form Next, how do we write it in set builder form? Okay, so it will be set of all x such that x is an element of set of integers. Okay, set of all x such that x is an element of the set of integers or z. And then you have to define the values of x. It should be greater than negative 2, less than 13. Okay, greater than your x must be more than or greater than negative 2. At the same time, less than 13. So this is how you answer the last example. Okay, so let's go back to our original slide. 
we have done those already so i think that is all for today in our next video i will be explaining the operations of sets okay or set operations the union the intersection the difference and the complement of set thank you for